begin our look at sports in Indianapolis. Our BronxNet cameras traveled to Indy for the IndyCar Grand Prix Saturday. Simon Pagino spoiled Scott Dixon's near-perfect day with an exciting pass on the second-to-last lap in the final turns. Pagino fought his way through the field after the rain came, picking up his third career IndyCar Grand Prix victory. Here's more. Check this out. The rain artist, Simon Pagano, slipped past Scott Dixon Saturday in a thrilling finish at the IndyCar Grand Prix. Pagano and his crew pitted under caution with 22 laps remaining at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The decision dropped Pagano and the number 22 Penske Chevy back to sixth place, but Pagano used the newfound grip and his skill at racing in the rain to pass five drivers, including Dixon, for the lead on the final lap to win the sixth annual NTT IndyCar Series event on the IMS road course for a third time. Heading into the final lap of the race, Dixon was in position to take the points lead over Joseph Newgarden and Alexander Rossi. However, when Pagano passed Dixon for the win, Newgarden kept his points lead in the championship heading into the Indianapolis 500. Dixon now slots himself into second in the point standings, while Long Beach winner Rossi falls to third after finishing 22nd on Saturday. The Indy 500 is next. It's two weeks away. I absolutely cannot wait. Brad Kaslowski headed to Victory Lane, capturing the checkered flag Saturday night and dedicating the win to his friend and mentor, Mike Mittler. Mittler lost his battle with cancer recently. Nice win for Brad in Kansas. The series heads to Charlotte for the All-Star Race next Saturday night. In Formula One, it was not the cleanest weekend for Lewis Hamilton. In fact, he has not been the cleanest all season. He was uncomfortable in the car at Barcelona and struggled with the tires and qualifying once again, which meant he was beaten to pole by teammate Valtteri Botas for the third time in a row. And yet he leaves the first European race of the season with another victory, his third of the season. And the championship lead, Hamilton won the Spanish Grand Prix. It was a commanding performance of the race, the Britons snatching the lead at the start, and from there, he never looked back. Mercedes also went 1-2 again. That's the story in F1. The only walk-off Game 7 winner in NBA history belongs to Kawhi Leonard. Is he really going to leave Toronto after the greatest moment in Raptors history? July will be July, but in May, Leonard is the king of Toronto. Sunday night and Toronto's biggest moment this season, tie game 4.2 seconds left. Leonard delivered a rattling game winner that sunk Philly and made Joel Embiid cry. What a shot, what a game. That was sick, Bob. Did you see that? Unbelievable. The Raptors advance to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Bucks starting Wednesday night in Milwaukee. I'll take the Bucks. Out west, it will be Portland and Golden State. Told you about the Warriors. They took care of Houston in six. Meanwhile, the Trailblazers needed another seven-game thriller to dispose of Denver. Sunday's Game 7 between Portland and the Nuggets was not a pretty one. The Nuggets, who had relied on Portland's inability to hit a jumper for the entirety of the first quarter, never were able to capitalize on an early 17-point lead. Slowly but surely, it dribbled away for the number two seed in the Western Conference playoffs until the Blazers crept back into the game. By halftime, Portland had cut the gap to just nine points. C.J. McCollum would play hero in the second half and down the stretch he scored a total of 37 points on 17 of 29 shooting to go with nine rebounds final score portland 100 denver 96 with portland officially headed to the western conference finals where they will meet the inevitable golden state warriors that means one thing is certain for a family based in North Carolina, a split household. For the first time in their careers, brothers Steph and Seth Curry will face off in a playoff series. It's also the first time any set of brothers have ever met in an NBA conference final, according to the Elias Sports Bureau. Fun factoid there. On the baseball diamond, the Bronx Bombers beat the Tampa Rays 7-1 Sunday to take two of three from the American League East leaders. Masahiro Tanaka outpitched reigning Cy Young Award winner Blake Snell Tyro Estrada homer just after play resumed following a ninth inning power outage and the scrappy pinstripers ravaged by injuries keep motoring on with a triple A all-star cast. New York closed back within one half game of the Rays despite 16 players. Yes, 16 going on the injured list. The Yankees are 24 and 16, just four wins fewer than after 40 games 
last year. Yanks are back home tonight. They welcome Baltimore to the stadium. Jonathan Loisica will go against Baltimore's David Hess. The Mets had Sunday's matchup with Miami and Flushing postponed by inclement weather. That series should have been played in Miami, as I noted on Friday. Mets are 19-20 and 20 and will be in Washington tonight to face the Nationals. All it does is rain here in New York, folks. Rain, rain, rain. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. We begin on the NHL playoff ice. The Boston Bruins have dominated the first two games of their series with Carolina. The Bruins defeated the Hurricanes 6-2 on Mother's Day to take a commanding 2-0 series lead. Game 3 is Tuesday night at 8 p.m. St. Louis and San Jose will play Game 2 tonight at 8. The Sharks won Game 1 6-3. In the NBA, the L.A. Lakers and LeBron James have a new head coach. Frank Vogel has agreed to a three-year deal to become the next coach of the Lakers. Vogel met with Lakers management Thursday and talks escalated quickly toward an offer Saturday to end the franchise's tumultuous coaching process with his hiring. The Lakers completed the deal Saturday afternoon with Vogel's agent Lonnie Cooper, who also represents L.A. Clippers coach Doc Rivers. Jason Kidd has also agreed to a deal to become a prominent assistant coach on Vogel's staff, league sources said. Interesting move there. I would expect Kidd to coach the L.A. Lakers at some point in the next three years. Sources are also saying that the Lakers will target Anthony Davis and either Kyrie Irving or Bronx boy Kimba Walker to pair with King James. In the MLS, the Red Bulls will face Atlanta FC on Sunday, May 19th. That's their next matchup. NYCFC will return to action on Saturday, May 25th, when the team plays Chicago. Manchester City were crowned the 2018-19 Premier League champions on Sunday. They retain their crown as the champs of England in a 4-1 win. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for some way too early MLB projections. You have to give, uh, you know, this feisty group of Yanks some credit for holding their own and then some while the stars are sidelined. Updated projections indicate the Yanks are going to win 95 games. They would finish 95 and 67 and fare better than any other team in the division record-wise. The projected AL East champs have an 83% chance of making the postseason with a 48% chance at the moment of winning the division. Numbers indicate that their World Series chances are only 12%, though. What it means right now the Yankees are projected to finish as baseball's third best team trailing only the LA Dodgers and the Houston Astros considering the injuries that threaten to derail this season the Yankees look like a team that banked enough wins to become a near postseason lock in mid-May I'm pretty sure we can sign up for that at this point Yanks need to get healthy and start figuring things out for October well before the season ends they have a strong shot to win it all folks there's plenty of depth and talent on this team kudos to manager Aaron Boone and the reserves for keeping the Yankees in it. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Stay tuned. More open back after this.